Hi, this is Anthony. Welcome back to my show. Let's get right into today's video. If you're like me, you probably see innumerable commercials on YouTube for investing in farmland. I haven't really paid attention to those commercials because I'm not really interested in it, but I did come across this particular company doing other research. It's called Farmland Partners Incorporated, and it's traded on the New York Stock Exchange with the stock symbol FPI. As always, before I begin, please click the subscribe button below. It really helps me out and it doesn't cost you anything. Thanks so much. Let's look at some charts for FPI. And of course, as I always point out, charts show you what has happened in the past, not necessarily what the future will hold, but it can be indicative of certain things. If we look at the max chart, it goes back to 2014. And if you would have bought it back then, you'd be up $1.61 or 12.4%. 12.4% doesn't or sounds pretty good, but you have to remember that that is if you held it for the past eight years. Over that period of time, your annual growth would be about 1.5%. Also looking at the chart, you'll see that if you bought it at its IPO, it slowly went down or sideways for years until October 2020 when it started going up. Let's look at a five-year chart. If you would have had the good fortune of buying it exactly five years ago, you'd be up $5.64 or just over 63%. Again, that sounds pretty good, but you have to divide that by five, and so it'd be up only a bit over 10% per year. Here's the chart for the past one year. So if you would have bought it 52 weeks ago, you'd be up just over $2.5 or almost 21%. That's pretty good considering we're in a bear or bearish market and a lot of stocks have gone down. Year to date, so from early January, you'd be up $2.40 or almost 20%. In the past month, it's just choppy, but basically going sideways. Of course, in addition to gains on your investment, as far as the stock price, you'd be getting a small dividend also. Let's look at the dividend history. Since the quarter ending June of 2022, they paid a quarterly dividend of six cents a share. Prior to that, since September 2018, they paid a quarterly dividend of five cents per share. Certainly an increase in the dividend is a move in the right direction generally, but that's a recent change and you have to remember that the dividend has stayed the same for almost four years. So there's been no gr get, uh, dividend growth in the past four years, but let's look at the dividend history before that and we see that they were paying nearly 13 cents quarterly per share prior to the drop to five cents a share. So from 2015 to 2018, they were paying 12.75 cents a share. And prior to that, the dividends had been around 10 and a half or 11 and a half cents a share. So not a really good trend with increases in dividends. Let's look at just a thumbnail of the financials for the quarter that ended. June 2022, they had diluted earnings per share of four cents. For March 2022, that quarter had zero cents per share. For the quarter that ended December 2021, they had 14 cents per share. And for the quarter that ended September 2021, they lost 17 cents per share. So very choppy as far as quarterly earnings per share, but it can probably be expected because it's an agricultural company. Again, don't take the advice of anybody that you find on the internet. Just use it as a starting point to begin your own research on the company, in particular, its financials and fundamentals. I'll have a link in the show notes from their website where you can find their financials. Okay, that's all I wanted to say for today. I'd love to hear from you. Please leave your comments in the comment section below. And if you disagree with me, please feel free to point out weaknesses in my arguments. Hopefully by now you've subscribed to this channel and liked this video. I would love it if you looked at my other videos. Hopefully click the like button on those and leave a comment, even a short one. All those things really help me out in building a following. As I always mention, this is not investment advice. I'm not an investment advisor. I'm just some guy on the internet that you don't know making YouTube videos that hopefully provide some entertainment, but I try to create entertainment that gives you a starting point where you can do your own research and potentially find stocks that might have some place in your well-diversified long-range portfolio. Thanks for watching and good luck in investing.